This is Transistor.fm. Hey folks, welcome back to part two of my conversation with Jason Cohen. If part one was, you know, Jason and I kind of uh, easing into things, setting the stage, part two is really, uh, there's no pretense. We, we really get into it. The real, raw, human experience of bootstrapping, of building a business, of being an entrepreneur, and not just theoretically what that looks like, but what does that mean practically? Practically in a real human life, where real human things are happening, you know, at home, where you have a significant other, where you have kids to feed, where you have the, the stress and the pressure that's created by, you know, wanting to build this thing from nothing, and I think Jason was really honest, and, and I think I was able to be really honest and open. And uh, the result is, I hope, valuable for all you folks. Before we get into that, a few quick reminders. First of all, uh, Mega Maker, the membership site for bootstrappers that I've run since 2013. It's going to be opening up registration again here in December and January. And I know a lot of you folks have been waiting to get in. If that's you, now's the time to sign up. You can go to megamaker.co and the waiting list is there. Number two, John and I, uh, my partner in Transistor, we're going to be doing a podcast in 2019 program. This is for all of you, especially those of you who work for an employer, or have wanted to start a podcast for your business, we are basically starting a concierge service for those of you that really want to succeed with a podcast in 2019. You don't want to just launch it, but you want to do it right. You want to have weekly instruction. You want to have a private Slack where you can ask questions. That's all going to be happening at podcast2019.com. Go there and sign up. And we'll let you know when we open that up as well. All right, folks, been getting a lot of feedback about this. Here is part two of my conversation with Jason Cohen. Of course, like so much of this is me thinking about my situation. And and this is really what's tricky about all of this advice and even talking about any of this in the commons is that so much of this is colored by our own experience. Right. And also colored by um, uh, how we remember things and also colored by um, the the time, which is, um, you know, some of it doesn't matter that you did it in 2003, but some of it, like you say, really does. I think you're absolutely right about memory being bad. I agree. Also goals. In other words, what did I want to do with Smart Bear? The answer is I just wanted like to have my own job and no one tells me what to do. Mm-hmm. That's literally like I wanted to make as much money as I could yeah. and also not deal with anybody. Yeah, That's a pretty negative statement. It's also true. That's what the, that's what the deal is. I did want to go bigger. And not at first. Again, I changed during the first kind of 18 months, which was that transition between bootstrapping and going, you know what? Never mind. I want to raise money and, and go big. Yeah. Part of that was having different goals and because it is a different set of constraints when you raise money and a different set of goals than bootstrapping. Again, not saying one's better. That's, of course, false. Yeah. Um, but but they're di- they are different. That's for dang sure. You have different goals and different tools to go after that. And I did want a different sort of journey this fourth time around. Um, and so – so it was, it was, I didn't even want to be CEO forever. And I did, I wasn't, I was a CEO for four years and then, and then changed. And so for the last five years, I've not been the CEO of my own company, mm-hmm. which has been fantastic. But in the smart bear days, the previous days, uh, that would have sounded like hell and it would have been hell. Cause again, like I, I was a different person or I, I had different goals, et cetera. So all those things you said about advice, totally agree. I'd add more to it. Um, and one of the big ones is goals. And so I really feel like when people give advice, what they really are doing is giving themselves advice 
which is too bad because they're not usually paying attention to you, the person asking for advice. So like to me, if you ask for advice on something and the first thing they do is start telling you what to do, they're not giving you advice because they didn't like the first thing they should do is ask you questions for an hour. Yeah. What? Uh, so what are you trying to get out of this? Like, what does good look like? Um, not yeah. like where do you want to be in five years. That's too weird. But like, do you want to never have employees? Cause that's really, cause the employee sucks. Like it's, it's a lot of work. It's hard to deal with people. And what if they don't do well? And what if they do? And yeah. oh my God, like for a lot of people, like I never want that. Like, great, 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 great. Or maybe you do. Maybe you want to make the biggest company ever. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to like, maybe you want to be famous. Maybe being famous doesn't matter. Maybe yeah. you want to make the most money. Maybe not. Or maybe there's a stack rank of that. Uh, what is your previous? Blah, 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 blah. Like that is a pre-conversation that to me is mandatory before someone can actually even have a chance of giving advice. They can still ignore all of that, of course, yeah. but at least they're interested. And so hopefully, hopefully the advice is tuned or they're trying to tune the advice to those things yeah. it'd be like having a tennis coach because the coach never looks at you they just tell you things about tennis like that's not what a coach does so i i feel like uh good advice could exist but very very rarely and certainly not on twitter yeah <laughs> Where it's an accident it is good advice for you but it's an accident it just so happens that their goals and experience and luck and boop, 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 all those things happen to line up so actually it is but how would you know <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and that's the tricky part. I, I often say you can't split test experience. And so even right. um, even right. if someone did succeed, we can't go back and then no. do a multivariate test and say, no. but if they had, you know, so it's tricky. Yeah. And it's worse. Like I, one of my more popular posts, as you pointed out, because I've been writing for a long time now, because the blog was popular eight years ago when I started WP Engine. So it's been a long time. Yeah. One of my more popular ones is about survivor bias. You know, people have a success, maybe too, like me. Mm -hmm. Then they have a blog where they tell people how to, how to run companies like yeah. me. Yeah. And then, and then, but what does it mean? Like, uh, are you sure that's real or did you get lucky twice? That's, I mean, with, with everyone in the world trying to make businesses, of course you're going to get lucky. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to get lucky a couple of times. So who cares? So yeah. at the very minimum, you have to ask, okay, you made this choice. You had these goals. You had you, you held these things to be important. You had this strategy, et cetera. Did other people more or less do the same thing and fail a lot? Because if so, it doesn't mean that's bad advice. You may need to do those things just to have a shot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's OK. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't mean success because if it's just as correlated with failure, who cares? And and they're actually and I put this in that post. There are books about there's a book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. Mm -hmm. And it's a very famous business book. It's a bestseller. Everyone quotes it. And what they did is they pulled, they he, they picked out 11 companies that really outperformed a long term on all these metrics, yada, yada, yada. And I said, hey, what makes these companies so great? And they interviewed the CEOs and they, and they came up with this thing. It's about culture and this. And performance, but this is what we mean by performance and all this stuff. And the idea is this is the formula or at least a – let's say, let's say a, a framework or a guide to excellence. The problem yeah. is that five years later, 40 percent of those companies were bankrupt. So number one, oh, wait, whoops, yeah. hold on. And also like when you go ask, well, what about other, say, public companies just to pick another cohort? Do they not do this? And it turns out, no, they do that too. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of those things too. They say the long thing too. Yeah. It's just like, oh, so none of this really matters at all. This is just stuff people do uh, yeah. largely. So that's an example of what I mean um, by that survivor bias or, or, or looking only at the good and not asking, but it, but it's the same there. So you're actually absolutely right. Of course, you can't run it twice. That's, that's right. You can try to ask, um, okay, but I'll look at this whole cohort versus this whole cohort, even though they're different companies. In my experience, that doesn't tell you very much because it turns out – Stuff isn't correlated that well. And my proof, my final proof of that is the whole job of a venture capitalist is to identify companies that will be really successful. Yeah. And they can't. That's why most of the companies in their portfolio at any given time don't. Yeah. And, and also um, only 25% of any venture capital firm ever makes money. That's really, really bad. In other words, but they're smart. They're not stupid. They're really smart. They do nothing but try to figure this out all day for, mm -hmm. for decades and they're super smart, and yet they can—they almost can't do it at all. Yes. So what that tells me is uh, there's not a formula. Stop it. Stop it. That's yeah. not the case. What you can do is say, all right, what are my abilities? What are the things I love? What are the things I want to learn? Um, what can I bring? What are my ideas? Can I try to be as honest as possible about 
is this resonating with customers? How's things going? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, really try not to confuse myself. Try not to lie to myself. It's very hard because we all want mm-hmm. things to succeed. But try. Um, and when it comes to advice, I think what you do is you say, number one, what are the goals, motivations, context, et cetera, of the person giving advice? Mm-hmm. Do I think that matches to me enough? This is not perfection, but enough. And if the answer is no, then, then never mind. It could still be good advice, but who knows? So just avoid. Yes. On the other hand, if you're like, yeah, no, this person's kind of like me. They got started the way I'm getting started. They're in the same kind of a building, same kind of product. Mm-hmm. And also I think they're just smart. Then, okay. like like So try to match it up since they can't do it for you. Yeah. And then another thing I'd say is it's okay to sort of ask, does this just resonate with how I feel? Like we tend not to want to do that, but I think it is okay. And the reason is if it's really true that all this advice is actually fine, there's people that say never use Twitter. It's a waste of time. They're probably right. Mm -hmm. There's people that say I built my whole business by building a following on Twitter. They're probably right. Mm -hmm. So if, if all of this can work, why shouldn't you choose based on what you're excited about? If all of them are equally smart, Mm -hmm. equally good ideas, more or less, or at least you can't choose one, the, the good or from the bad. Yeah. Why not pick the one that you're personally really jazzed about? Because whatever you're jazzed about, you're going automatically to put in that extra energy and that time and you'll wake up at two in the morning thinking about it mm-hmm. and blah, 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 blah. You are going to do that. And you know what? If A and B are both pretty much good ideas, but one you're jazzed about, which one are you going to kill more likely? Yeah. The one you're jazzed about. So yeah. as weird as it is to say go with what excites you. Not your, not, not follow your passion. That's bullshit. That's crap. Yeah. But the thing about like, well, I can't pick between this advice going with the thing that you just really jazz you up. That is my logical reasoning why that's not the worst way to pick it. Yeah. And obviously there's tension between all of these ideas. (laughs) Like there is, uh, on one hand, this is true. Like if, if I am more excited about, and let me rephrase what you just said and see if I'm understanding, if I am more excited about a specific group of customers and a specific idea and a even a specific way of building that company culturally, ideologically, um, theoretically, if I go head to head with somebody who is not as excited, I have a better chance of winning. Is that true? I would put it more like you have a chance at succeeding doing your thing. I don't, I don't really, I understand the competitive mode. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when I do strengths finder, my third biggest one is competitive. So I absolutely identify with that, mm-hmm. but I actually think that's probably the wrong way to, to plan things. How will I beat them? Is probably the wrong mode. The right mode is probably how do I build a product I'm incredibly proud of? And can I find customers who are super excited about whatever the heck I built for whatever reason? Mm -hmm. And it could come from a lot of different places. Like there are products that are not very good, but the company itself, its character, the uh, the way it expresses itself. uh, Actually, 37 Singles is a good example where early on the product is not good. Mm -hmm. And in fact, all the other products they built were so bad that they abandoned them because they weren't good. Yeah. But man, do people love the company and they should. They should. It is. I mean – the the contributions they've made to to the debate and and the ideas that they have and how well they are how how well they do it and the and, and the inspiration they give people that's all very real yeah. why not buy a product on that basis I bought fog bugs from Joel Spolsky back in the day because I loved his blog not because it was the best bug track bug tracking software no one would tell you that's the best bug tracking software yeah. <laughs> but I did it that's perfectly valid so yeah. what I'm saying is. When I say the be- you know, be the best for people, it yeah. can mean so many things. Patagonia, like it probably does have good stuff, but mostly it's because, my God, that company, the culture and what they do for the for wildlife and stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's company policy that if you get arrested for protesting something with the environment, they will bail you out of jail. <laughs> That's how much they believe in that. Yeah. Right? So yeah. so like, is that a reason to buy? Hell yeah, it is. Of course yeah. it is. So it can be features. It can be the product. It can be the culture. It can be the purpose. I mean, it can be a lot of things. Let's not box it into one thing. It can be. Yeah. But let's let's put a uh, let's let's call all those things like a really great reason for people to get excited about buying that product. It could be just it's the best product. That's Google. No mm-hmm. one gave a crap about Google, but it was the best. Yeah. It was simply the best. So it can be the best product. That's cool too. So there's so many ways. But I would say forget the forget, forget the competition. Mm-hmm. I bought you know you buy from Patagonia because they're great, not because I don't even know who the competition is. But you you're not not buying this other one. You're buying Patagonia, and so like I think yeah. that is 
positive, strong. That's your own story, your own narrative, your own value, what you're doing. I say focus on, of course, this competition matters. You got to look, you might feature compete, you might lose to them on certain features. So you have to make the feature. Obviously, operationally, yes, you have to care about competitors. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, like, you can't build a company by, by, uh, like, well, here's how we're not this other person. You have to decide who you are and kill it. And so that's why I say the things, if you pick the things where you're like, yeah, that, that's great. That's because that's going to be you killing it as opposed to I'll be better than someone else who maybe isn't as passionate. Because look, most entrepreneurs are passionate. I don't, let's not have a passion war. Mm-hmm. Let's just say you should do the things that you, uh, where you happen to be energetic and fulfilled at because that is the best you. And yes. that's what you need to be is just the best you and the best organization, period, regardless of whether what comp- competitors are doing. Yeah. And so let's so let's keep fleshing that out a little bit. The um cuz one of the things I've always appreciated about you. Uh you used to have this podcast. I don't know if you still do, but you used to have this <laughs> podcast where often <laughs> people would come to you with ideas and you were kind of like the the bad medicine man. Oh, as that was in, so fun. I, I will give you the medicine. Was, I, I'll tell you what I called it. It was Dr. Laura for startups. Dr. Laura for startups, right? yes. And here's why I called it that because – because I figured I'd be giving the same advice all the time because how many ideas can I have anyway? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, but, but it's so fun anyway. Like, like you listen to Dr. Laura and like people call up and you're like, oh, what a crazy person. Dr. Laura's going to tell them whatever, you know, yeah. and you're probably right. But it's so fun to know what she's going to say. Like you don't even care that it's a thousandth time and you even know what she's going to say. It's still fun. So I thought maybe it'd be like that. I only stopped because of time. It just uh, – with WP Engine starting to take off, I just had no time for anything extra. But yeah, that was fun. It was – well, the other thing is I do tend to do that when people – actually, this happened in our Twitter thread. But I, I don't I – don't, I'm not saying this is a good thing, but it is a pattern. My normal mode is people say, oh, look, I have this idea. I have this company. I do pitch practice all the time with companies here in Austin with Capital Factory. Yes. Here's my pitch. And, and my first reaction is just to shred it. Like, mm-hmm. this is wrong. That's bad. And I'm not convinced about this and this. And, of course, that's terrible. I shouldn't do that. Um, but but it's honest and it's direct. Mm-hmm. And then – this is the difference. And then it's like, now, I think this is a fantastic idea and a fantastic business. The reason I think what you just did sucks – is that I think there's incredible things here and you're not telling me those things. Hmm. But I can see them. Like this isn't a product just to uh, organize how uh, – how, uh, let, me, let me think. Um, I, I don't really want to call anyone out. But let's just say this is not just a product that allows people to do this and that online. The reason people want to do this particular thing online is because they want an income stream. Mm-hmm. Why do they want that? Because maybe they want to qu- quit their shitty job. Mm-hmm. And be their own boss, even if they're making less money. Maybe they just need money on the side. Maybe they're a single parent and they need that money. Maybe they're staying at home and they need purpose. Maybe they're an artist and they've always wanted to do this. And this is a way to finally get art together with money, which is so hard. This is changing people's lives for real. Maybe yeah. they're in a country where it's too hard to do that, but because it's online, they can do it. This is this is the re the real changing people's lives. Not the stupid Silicon Valley, oh, I have a lot of people look in my app, so I'm changing lives. No. Yeah. Just one person who gets that extra thousand dollars a month, and so they can do this instead of that. It, it, it can transform it. That is what you're doing. And all you told me about was some feature about how someone can resize an image on a goddamn website. <laughs> so I shred them not because they're they're bad, obviously, but because it's like, no, this is amazing. I, I, I should be like giving you money philanthropically so that you do this for people because I really feel like that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So in other words, I, maybe I'm, I'm too harsh when I tear it down, but only because I want to fill it back up with something that's that's hopefully like just more compelling and, and or or better. Or maybe there are some some particular points that are a problem. Yeah, you got to put your finger on it and be honest, so that you can go solve it, not so you can quit. Yes, but so you can go. Oh, this is the thing I need to work on. And everyone else told me this. I hear all the time. Everyone else told me my idea was good. And you were the only one who said, "Well, I see three problems." And each time, it's like now this isn't necessarily a deal breaker because you could do A, you could do B. You probably mm-hmm. have a better idea than A or B. Yeah. But you can't do. No- I feel like you can't do nothing about it. I think yes. you need perspective about it. Yeah. So you should stop, but I think you kind of need an answer here. Yes. So, you know, that's totally different than just, you know, so anyway, but I'm probably too harsh. But I think it has to be followed up with uh, with that. That's yeah. just, by the way, that's what I think good advice looks like as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, the and man, there's a, a lot of threads I want to pull on there. Um cuz you really got fired up just now. Like uh See? 
in, in terms of, uh, especially when you were talking about changing people's lives. Yeah. And man, uh, I just, <laughs> cause I, I'm going to spell out the threads and then we'll cover them one by one. So one, <laughs> okay. one thread is you could be changing people's lives, but as you said on Twitter, if after three years you're only making twenty thousand dollars a year, right? Um, that's probably not going to be enough realistically for you to make a living, and so we right. just need to address that right pragmatically, right? Uh, so that's one thread. Let's just keep that there. Uh, the second thought I have is because now WP Engine to me, I don't know all the customers you serve, but I know that you know right now you kind of have this image of being for kind of enterprisey or companies you know these are people that yeah. are there are, these aren't like uh jason cohen solo blogger although you have some of those folks yeah we, we do that too and so i'm wondering I mean, we're cheaper now than we were when we launched i mean i had those people at 50 dollars a month now the cheapest is 35 so yeah we still have that so uh, and unfortunately all of these things splinter into new threads but right <laughs> initially when you're building WP Engine, were you just excited about other people like you that had blogs? Or were you excited about that, you know, 300 person company that was going to use WordPress as their CMS? Because did they both fire you up in terms of changing lives? Or did that change over time? It changed over time. Originally, what I was excited about is, oh, look, someone will pay me for this. Yes. That right? was it. <laughs> like, not, I don't care if I'm changing their life. Like, you know, yeah. I wish I could say that I was, I felt that way, but you know, if you're being honest, like sweet, this is really like resonating from a product market fit perspective. Holy crap. This is so needed. Yeah. And what I really liked was the uh, engineering. Yeah. It, it was fun to optimize and secure and, and cash da, da, da. for me personally, of course, uh, for me personally, that, that was really fun. So here I get to work on what I find to be interesting engineering problems and people really need it. Like really like they're, they're it's like, it's too easy almost to get new customers, which is an indication that like, Oh, you've hit on something. Yeah. So I just felt like this is going to be a great little company. Yeah. Again, it took about 18 months, maybe longer for me to change. I mean, how I felt about it now, not that people didn't sign up. In fact, they were signing up more and more. That was part of the, actually the impulse to go, do I only care about making money and working on that? Yeah. Cause some of this other stuff, some of the stuff that is happening, you know, the small business owners and they're able to have sites that they couldn't before they were losing money or, you know, there's a million stories sort of like what I was just saying about, of course I was thinking of somebody else, but, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to, you know, sell WB engine or anything right now, but, 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 uh, you know, someone's saying something like, um, yeah, like I, I, like we had a customer who made her own guitars and sold them and uh, she got big press and she got a bunch of traffic and a site crashed. That should have been her biggest sales day ever. Mm -hmm. And instead it wasn't. Yes. And so we got her up. She got another big sales day and it was her biggest sales day ever. And to this day, we have one of her guitars up in the support area because she sent one to our support team for helping her oh, do wow. all that stuff. You know, that, that is changing lives. Like in yeah. the same way as I was saying, right? So that is really exciting. So as you start seeing stuff like that um, or, or big brands, that's cool too. Um, and also the other employees, not just our customers, is what we do for employees. Um, a third of our employees don't have a college education, which is unusual for a high tech company. Mm -hmm. uh, half our half of our executive team are women. We have a whole lot of diversity in all sorts of dimensions. And yes, we look because if you're not looking, then you don't know, and and you can't claim that you're that you care. Number one, or that you're trying to do something about it. Number two. Yeah. So actually, we have we have really great numbers in various ways like that. Like these are ways in which you really can open the door for folks. And you know, of course, you don't want to. Um, uh, you can you need to open the door. Other people have to walk through the door. Like you have to earn it. Yeah. But mo for a lot of people in mo in most companies, the door is not open. Yeah. And and, and that's not okay. And so uh, to do that, and you see, when you see, for example. People who are clearly being their true selves at work. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, again, you can't you, you can't really you can't overstate how important that is and how much of an impact that is. Mm -hmm. um, or like, uh, I don't know, we do we like uh, um, we the, well anyway. Th there's a lot of examples, but but that those kind of things that 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 matters and so so when i started see, seeing a little bit of that it kind of changed like wait a minute what can what is fulfilling to do at this point again and also at this point in my life and career blah, 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 you know whatever all kinds of things together yeah i like that perspective so. because 
initially you said it was just exciting seeing someone pay you. Right. It was. And, and it was, by the way, was that just as exhilarating with WP Engine, you know, your second round as yeah. it was with the Smart Bear? Yep. Okay. So when, when these <laughs> people started paying, uh, also as an aside, I, I, pragmatically, I'm kind of surprised WP Engine worked in a way because uh, to me, like if you were going to say, I'm going to reach out to all these solo bloggers... And some of them make money and some of them don't. And I'm going to charge them $50 a month and they're going to pay me for it. I would say, well, you might be able to get them for a few months, but they're going to churn out. Like that's not a good customer group. Solo solo blogging was never the primary. Okay. You were always going after businesses? Yeah. There's a few successful bloggers where, okay, fine. Um, But um, no, no, no. it It was typically actually a freelancer who would build sites for folks and but they build it for them and put it on the GoDaddies of the world or the Bluehosts of the world. Mm-hmm. It's cheap, but like sites get hacked. They they're slow. Google yeah. will rank you lower if it's slow. So customers notice that because their SEO person told them to make their site faster. So they tell their their freelancer to make the site faster. The freelancer is like, I don't know. You're you know you're one of a three thousand on this machine. Yeah. I don't even know, right? Like so there was different there was different modalities sometimes. So sometimes the SEO person here says your site's slow, so you, you need to find something faster, and now you're willing to pay. Yeah. Another modality was I got a load of traffic, my site went down, I never want that to happen again. Yeah. Another modality was I got hacked, I never want that to happen again. Yes. So in other words, the, the, usually there was some kind of triggering event, either through a freelancer or, or direct, where someone's like, okay, now I'm ready to spend 50 instead of $5 a month because I now see the value. So the, usually there was a triggering event mm-hmm. or a freelancer who's like, I'm going to you know make sure my clients are on the right thing to begin with. Yeah. And incidentally, that is, uh, I think I've been a WP Engine customer for five or six years. I can't remember. Oh, wow. But That's that, great. that was the, the part of the trigger was I was writing things on my blog that were getting to Hacker News. And every time it happened, it killed me. Mm-hmm. But the thing that pushed me over the edge was I, I built a site for my dad for his organization. And, he, you know, there's five people using this site and adding plugins. And, you know, the third time... I had to go in and remove all the malware. I said, that's it. I, <laughs> yeah. I've got it. This is, this is killing me. Yeah. And so, you know, to this day, that site's on WP Engine because of that. Um, okay. And this final, how many, do you have four minutes left or how many minutes do you have left? Let me see. It's 1056. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm actually don't have a hard stop, so I'm, I can do whatever. Okay, perfect. So, cause I want, I want to uh, and maybe do a little bit of uh, uh, Jason Cohen's Dr. Laura show right now with, uh, with Transistor. Uh-oh. That's going to get nasty. <laughs> oh, wow. You're already, you're no, ready no, no. to gear it up. <laughs> so the, um, I'll explain briefly where we're at right now. Uh, we launched, so John and I got together in January. Uh, the reason I was interested in this is because he had one customer already, which was Cards Against Humanity. Ooh. And I thought I had noticed this trend. Uh, you know, I've been a podcaster since 2012. I'd noticed, I always thought podcasters were a terrible market because they're very DIY. Right. Hobbyists, you got a Dungeons and Dragons show. You're not going to pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> but I'd noticed this trend. A few things kind of culminating. Basecamp has a show. CodePen has a show. A lot of WordPress shops have a show. And then Cards Against Humanity wants a show. Yeah. And they hired two people. And they might be an outlier, but they hired two people full time to work on the show. At the same time, all of this media is coming out about ad rates. We thought that Apple released a bunch of new analytics that showed they were going to release a bunch of analytics. And everyone thought these high CPMs that podcasts are getting are going to go away. Because we're going to get the real data, and then people are going to know. But Apple's data came out, and it was all positive. This, these people that listen to podcasts listen almost to the entire thing. They don't skip ads. They're very, uh, you know, uh, they're dedicated to the shows they listen to, all those things. And I had personally experienced the power of earning an audience's trust through this medium that's very uh, kind of intimate and... Uh, you build the listeners build a relationship with the host. Yeah, and I'd seen how from my own little business selling online courses, 
it had been meaningfully impacted revenue when I asked mm -hmm. customers how they heard. So John and I get together, we start working on this thing, and we launched in August, and now it's December. Uh, I'm going to go off the top of my head. I think we're at $4,300, $4,200 in MRR, and about 220 qu customers. And uh, That's good. Well, that, this is what we're trying to figure out. So the It's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, th this is over. The, uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, no, um, so part of me, when I was writing, when I wrote that tweet, and I, and when I wrote that blog post, part of my context is, okay, it looks like there's something here. Um, and I've had some other people check those numbers too. You know, I had. Josh Pigford look at them and Rob Walling yeah. and Nathan Barry and uh, Ruben Gamez. And so far they say, they say you're not, it's not like you've hit a grand slam home run, but these numbers look good. Yeah. That's what I said. And the, the crossroads though, and I think it's, it's common for a lot of bootstrappers is what do I do now? Cause this is really hard. Yeah. I'm, I'm just plugging away. Yeah. And I thought, you know, maybe my online course business is going to help fund this thing. John's working full time for Cards Against Humanity. And so the thought is, what do we do now? And part of my thinking with that tweet... I, I don't understand why now is a decision point. Uh, What's making now a decision point? Like, why not do what you did yesterday? Uh, because I don't know how much longer I can go. Oh, you're, you're burning up. I'm burning up. Yeah. Oh. So the... the and... So my constraint would be money, and John's constraint would be time. Oh, why don't you trade? Well, we, maybe we should. <laughs> I'll just go work for Cards Against Humanity for a while, and then... And, and so part of me was thinking, maybe I should just, you know, go get a job or do some consulting. Those are both options. And grow this on the side. And, um, you know, 10, 15 hours a week. That's How many hours a week have you been spending? I mean, it's hard to say because I'm pretty excited about it. My problem right. is I, I wake up every day with a blank slate so I can go and try to make run over here and make some money or I can answer a bunch of people in support and I can reach out to people and I can, you know, Ruben Gamez sends me this idea for SEO and I can write a blog post that fits. So the, 60 hours a week? I don't, think it's, I don't think it's 60. No, no, I, I've got, I've got four kids too. So that's the other constraint on my side. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's probably, it's probably three hours a day that I'm spending right now. Why is that burning you up? That sounds easy. I've heard that the, that the, the biggest thing that you get, like the, the CEO's biggest job is thinking, is having brain space to focus on the business? Eh, you're not there yet. You just need to get more money. You just think I need to get more money? Yeah, you need to just get more customers. You're not in the place where you're thinking big strategy. So would it be... There's not even one person working on the company full-time, so there's nothing... Even if you had the best strategy in the world, what are you going to do with it? Nothing. So I think right now you just need to get some customers. And so do you think I should just keep limping along... You're not limping. You went from zero to 4,300 in three months. Oh, I mean, that, that part is good. What do you do with the rest of the time? Three hours a day on this. Yeah. So that's like really small. So what do you do the rest of the time? The other five hours. Oh, man. It would be actually interesting to know There's how much There's more than five other hours. What do you do with the time? Well, the rest of the time, I'm home. I'm here at the office from like 830 till 5. And then I'm home. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Taking care of four kids. Taking no, them. no, no. From 8.30 to 5, you're in the office. Oh, yeah. And uh, only three of that is this. So what's that? Rest the rest. Yeah, the rest of it is, is kind of doing, running a sale for the courses. Oh, running the course business. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so, I mean, I could keep doing that. It, the, the problem is the course business is very launch- 
based. So yeah. for this past year, I did not launch anything new. I just kind of went off the old stuff. And really to like the people that are good at this dedicate a full year to making a course and it's like their full time focus and then they launch and then their back catalog is 20, 30% of revenue, but it's the new stuff that makes money. And so I could do that, but that it just feels like I would really have to focus my brain on just that. And part of my thinking is, well, I wonder if, like, maybe we should just raise a little bit of money. That would be hard. And do it. You think hard in the sense of, like, now there's earnest capital, now there's tiny seed, there's places that will fund bootstrappers. Yeah. Hard in the sense of, it would be hard to get the money or hard in the sense of... Well, those sources would be good. Yeah. Like you said, like you were just doing, you can count them on one hand. So if one of them will do it, that's good. <laughs> and if not, then then it'll be really hard. Mm. But yeah. that's a good that's a good place to that's that's a good thing to think about. Um does, so the online courses make a lot of money? So 2017 I'd probably did two hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Oh that's good. So this you, past year though, it was, do, it was way down. <laughs> well you were working on other stuff. Maybe you could get someone to help uh run the courses. Yeah, that it's so, again, it's very personality brand based. Oh yeah, yeah, that's always hard. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, which is why I part of what I want to get out of it. It's like the there's nothing I can sell. I I can't sell this asset to someone yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. I also can't get someone else to play me on television. You know, I I have to be. It's either me. Or... Well, let me push back on that a little bit. So there's a lot of content that has to be you. But you said a lot of it is like, oh, I got to make sales and, and do all kinds of stuff. That sounds very operational. That doesn't have to be you. Mm -hmm. It just feels like in order to make a, especially if, if courses really lose their value over time, mm -hmm. then I have really lost a lot of value. And to all of a sudden, uh, to, to kick start that again means I'm going to have to invest a bunch more time into a new product that... Uh, you know, may or may not make a bunch of money. So you're saying you don't, no matter what, you don't want to keep doing the courses. No, that's just not an option. I want to get out of the course business uh. gradually. Yeah, but I could. I mean, I do have other options. I could. Uh, I could just go and do consulting. I could. You know, but these are the same things that all bootstrappers are thinking. I'm yeah. at four thousand dollars a month. It's not enough to right. support the family. Right. What do I do? And well, you just said it. You know what the choices are. It's like I, what's funny is um, this is why it's so infuriating when when you have people online saying like, "Oh, what you do is you just work on it for ten hours a week and, and screw off the rest of the time." And it's like, yeah. nope, that's not true. Yeah, that's not how that works. Yeah. No. Yeah. And by the way, if you have even if you just have a regular old salary job because that's the least. Uh, Stressful thing to do. Yes. Because the problem with uh, consulting is it's it's spiky. You get a lot of money and then not. And when it spikes, it's very hard to spend time on uh, on the product because the hourly always wins. Yeah. So it's it's difficult. And then and then when the hourly drops and you could work on the product, you're all stressed out because no money's coming in. You have kids to feed. Yeah. So so it's it. Uh, I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's the roller coaster that that is. It's hard. It's emotionally difficult yes. to do th to do that. So the less emotionally difficult thing is you get a salary job because then you know what when that paycheck's coming every month and that that part of your brain goes, I'm not worried about feeding the family and that's good. That's that's a healthy thing. Since yeah. this whole thing is stressful, it can be nice to again sort of put some of the stress to bed in a certain way. That can be good. Yeah. Um. But then there's no such thing as not working like crazy because, okay, what's the minimum amount of time you could possibly spend on this? And, uh, you know, 10 hours a week is just not going to do it. Yeah. It's, I just don't believe that. I mean, maybe you could say it is, but I bet you do more than that. Yeah. And it, doing it even less than that is not how you get something off the ground. And so, okay, well, if I have a job that's 40 hours a week and then you're doing this and it's 20 hours a week, that's 60 hours a week. And by the way, there's kids and family and that takes another at least 40 hours a week, you would think, you would yeah. want. 
I'm counting weekends, obviously. Um, and so that is 100% of the time. And really, not all of those are going to be successful. Like, you're not going to be that successful at the job, or you're going to neglect your family. Yes. Or the startup's just not going to get the attention and, and um, that it deserves. So, I mean, just like you said a little while ago, which is, I'm really passionate about this, so I, I wake up thinking about it and everything. Exactly. That's why it's not three hours a day. It's yes. not compartmentalized into this, like, I'll just do it one hour a day in the morning, and then I'll stop thinking about it. Yeah. I do not believe you. Yeah. Because you're passionate about it, and you and – you, yeah. Work on it in your head and you work on it in practice more well, than that. Hold on. Let me bring so, my wife into this conversation here. We'll see. Yeah, you... <laughs> yeah exactly. So again, I just don't believe that. Um, uh, it's fine to say it's not true Yeah. for most people, for most people, right? So, um, so where does that leave you? And it's like, well, um, if you bootstrap, it means working all the time because mm-hmm. you have to feed whoever, <laughs> yourself, et cetera. Yeah. And you're making an entire company. Yes. So that's all of the time. We're done with with your time. We've allocated it. Yeah. That's the answer. But it's really hard. I'm getting burned out. I know. That's why. That's one big reason why they fail is because people simply stop because it's hard. Yes. So that's right. It's freaking hard. Correct. Yeah. And again, like I'm, I'm trying to find like there's a lot of uh, you know. There's a lot of lore around certain companies where that wasn't the case. Yeah. But for every one of those, I can give you a hundred. Where that is exactly the case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was yeah. really, really, really hard. Yes. Until finally it wasn't a long time after that. That is the normal mode. Now another mode is raise money. Yeah. And as you said, there's new modes that are not um, that are not Sequoia Capital. Yeah. Oh good. They're still raising money. Yeah. It's just there's there's other modes that are probably better for the bootstrap uh, mentality. Great. You know, the, yeah. exactly that's the more the better. The more modes there are, the better. Yeah. This is another mode is you say, okay. Instead of paying for this, in a sense, through destroying my waking hours, yeah, I will instead pay for this by working with another group, a group that hopefully you like and hopefully will give you good advice. They're certainly going to give you money and, and controlling uh, a piece of the company mm-hmm. and so forth. And you say, I know, I know, but the alternative is – uh, and doing um, consulting work, which, again, is not, not a bad idea. It just comes with the um, – it just comes with um, uh, uh, the the kind of up and down and and having to manage that, going getting clients. Like it's it's a lot of work, yeah. and, you, and you have stress. But it's okay. It's just that's that that mode. There's the salary mode, and there's the uh, and where you're working constantly. And then there's the um, and then there's a raising money mode yeah. where someone else puts in the money, and but you it comes with them. <laughs> yeah. In terms of upside and advice and control and all the things that it comes with. Yeah. I mean, so, this is Yes, those are the choices. They're all they all cost you in some fashion. Yeah. And for, and so what is your decision making matrix when you're deciding, okay, like there's there's a good decision here, there's a better decision, there's the best decision. What yeah. do you per, how do you cuz part of me initially when mm-hmm. I heard about earnest capital, everyone else that knows about these things and is smarter than me, they say, Justin, that money is incredible because they'll give you 100 right. to 200 K yeah. and then they want a three to five X earn out, but they right. don't take any equity. Yeah. To me, I'm just like, man, that means I have to pay out 500 grand at some point. And that seems crazy, but. No, it doesn't. That's not what that means. What do you mean? <laughs> no, they only get that if the company sells for a lot more than that. They only get, well, they get that if the, the, cause it's founder earnings. So they get that if, if the company starts making money yeah, and I say, you know, the company is making whatever, $500,000 profit a year, they're yeah. going to say, okay, now it's time to pay back right. this investment. Yeah. We don't have equity, but we want a piece until we get to this cap and right. then you're done. Yeah. That part sounds nice. Yeah. Um. So let's let's just say that's what's on the table well, right so, now. So, so the question is how to make this decision. And the, the mm-hmm. thing is, it's not good, better, best. It's not linear. It's not like you can stack rank them. And that's why it's a hard decision because it's like, well, this is better for this reason. This is worse for that reason. And they're not comparable things. Mm-hmm. What's better? The, the all the stuff you just said, um, or working really hard, working many more hours. Which one's better? Well, they're not. A, that, there's not the same unit. Mm-hmm. You can't compare them. Yeah, they're not comparable, right? 
So this is why it's hard to make decision because there's multiple dimensions and each one has these trade-offs and the units are not comparable. So you can't ju- you can't stack rag them. Yes. And you also should not make a rubric. The answer will be they all are sort of good and mm-hmm. bad. The other we thing, already do that. I, I, sorry to interrupt, but I think the other challenge yeah. with hearing folks online mm-hmm. is like I I admire your writing. Clearly, you've done well in business. I have no idea what your personal life is like. I have right. no idea what your mental health is like. Exactly. No, you know, all of these things. That's why you can't use that to decide for you. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. You can't. Um, so, so because you can't, you, you can't use that and, and, and like you can't really stack, you can't stack rank, you can't rubric it into an answer. So therefore, what I think is you can decide there are certain limits or certain thresholds I will not cross. So, for example, you could say, you know what? I have four kids and a wife that I'd like to keep. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to do anything that that jeopardizes that. Yeah. And if that means I don't have a company, then I don't have a company. Yeah. Now, if I can have a company and do that, that is my ideal. That is, In fact, that is my goal, and that's exactly what I want to solve for. But if I have to pick, I know which one I'm picking. Yeah. Or you could say, I have all that, but... For the next two years, I understand that uh, I don't want it to suffer, but it might. And that might just be like a pact. Yeah. Um, so so that's what I mean by a limit. Is, is there like this line you won't cross, this threshold you won't cross? That could be about money. It could be about how you put your time. It could be uh, – th- there could be different things. So that's, that's one thing to help because that's not a stack rank. That's a filter. Mm-hmm. So suppose you said, I will be home at this time and I will – you know, let's suppose you said that. You might just filter out right there the possibility of getting a day job, a regular salary job, and doing a startup because you go, you know what? There actually isn't hours to do that. That's not a possibility. Yeah. However, this other one where I raise money um, does. So you see that's a fil- that's not a stack rank. That's a filter. Filters are good because it reduces the, the problem set. Filters yeah, are good. Yeah. So one thing is filter. That's, that's one good thing. Another thing is uh, still you'll have more than one probably Yeah. because you're probably good at thinking of options. So then – Again, there's so many dimensions. So that's too hard to try to like compare the dimensions. So then you say, all right, I'm going to just pick one or two things that are going to be the most important things. And that's that. Yeah. I'm going to, in other words, I'm going to make the decision based on one or two dimensions only. Yes. Even though there's all those other ones. If I don't it, start ignoring some of this crap, I will never get around it because it's circular. This mm-hmm. is better than A, but that's better B, but that's better C, but that's better than A. And, and mm-hmm. like I have to throw some of this away. Yeah. Or I can't finally stack rank, you know, actually stack rank. Yes. So you, for example, you, you could say, what makes me the, what is most likely to make me the most money? Yeah. And just do that. Or yes. you could say, um, what, uh, what you, you could, if you're a little introspective about what is exciting, what does jazz you up? What is exciting? You say, that's what I want to maximize. Yeah. And so that might mean I do or don't have control over this or that, or I do or don't have this partner. Or it happens over this time period, or that time period. Mm-hmm. But like, I want to maximize doing X or learning X or experiencing mm-hmm. X, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and then 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 you just solve for that, and you just like knowing you're trading off the other variables. Yes, I know. That's the point. I got to decide what I'm not trading off. Yes. And then the rest follows. Um, another filter example would be this whole question about about whether you would ever want another partner. You already chose one partner because you have a co-founder. Yes. Would you ever have another partner? And you could say, look, I already have a partner. I've already gone down that road. Uh, mm, I don't want to, but like, I'm not going to just filter it out. Or again, you could say, I will never have an investor. People say different things, and you know what? I don't even I don't even want to know what the answer is. Yes. I don't even want to try to figure out. Every second I spend trying to figure out if that payout is good or bad or this or that. I'm wasting my life thinking about this. No, yeah. the answer is no. Okay, so you could decide to filter that out or not. You could. So I think you, you set up a couple of filters and you decide, and this is the dimension, maybe two, but yeah, of yeah. course, then you get back to the problem if you have too many. So maybe one or two critical things, and you're going to say, I'm going to decide on the basis of just this dimension or maybe two with my filters applied. And then often you can actually get it down to one. You're like, you know what? And But also what's nice is now you know why. So another mm-hmm. problem is you could say, I guess I could raise money, but then your brain's still racing around. Yeah, but on the other hand, bad thing. And on the other hand, good thing. And you know, you get, it never settles down, so you never feel like, so so is that the right decision? And you like never feel. But when you filter, you know, I know why that's a no because this filter. Yes. And you feel comfortable, like, 
I know why. And, and, and if it ever pops back up, wait a minute, but no, because mm, – and you're like, good, I can put it to bed. And the same thing with the dimension. Mm-hmm. But this other thing, you're exactly right, except the number one most important thing to me is doing X. Yeah. And therefore, um, you're, you're totally right about that other thing. Yes. But and, – and look, if I can incorporate the other thing a little, I will. Yeah, right? it's, it's, I, I will. But I'm, but this is the primary one, and that's what I'm doing. Yes, and this I think is why people get so passionate, you know, because the 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 important thing for them, like if you look at Jason and David at thirty at Basecamp, they have some very important values, that, some things that they hold on dear to. Yes, and. and uh, and they've certainly attracted an audience that also is attracted to those things. And so, right. and so when they are making decisions, mm-hmm. they are filtering everything through that. Right. But then someone else can come along and go, but wait a second, mm-hmm. that, that doesn't match up with the way I feel. Uh, you know, and there's certain like the, the guy that runs teamwork, you know, he wants to build a totally different project management company. Sure. Good. And, Again, also, the, the, what's funny about some of these things is that uh, it's not always uh, folks that really want, who are going after six, uh, a big success. You know, they, different they, goals. Yeah, it's, it's, yes. it's, it really changes things. And so I appreciate you saying that because I, I think even in my head now, I'm able to think part of this is just about what I value. Why am I doing this? Would I be happy if Transistor made $50,000 a month and it was just John and I and a support person working on this the rest of our lives? It's a good question. Yes, I totally would. That would be a dream. Um, now, that doesn't mean I get that. Like I might get there and then all of a sudden it's like Peldy at Balsamic. He wants it to be a one-person company, but it turns yeah. into something bigger. I've been making fun of that for, it, but to him and good naturedly since he started. Yes, yeah. And, hey, hey, Belly, how's that? How's that a little cafe in the corner going? Yeah, we hired another ten people. <laughs> well, you know, don't do that. <laughs> and, and obviously, what you want changes. Like when you started out, you were just excited about building something interesting and having people pay about it. But as you moved along. What you wanted changed. Yeah. Now you get jazzed up about diversity. You get jazzed up about your culture. You get, I don't give, I mean, I don't, I shouldn't say I don't give a shit about our culture. We think a little bit about culture, but it's just John and I. It's too small, it's too small to worry about that. Yeah. But now at your stage, you're thinking about those things. And um, yeah, I think that, that maybe to close this off, <laughs> do you think, because at one point, I had this ideology that I thought everybody, well, I, th- I thought everybody should make things and try to earn a little bit of ind- independent income on the side. Just because I, I always felt like that was healthy. For me, it, it always made me feel like I've got a little something. Well, it sounds like advice to me. That sounds like advice. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, you know, uh, I'm realizing how hard this is. <laughs> And, um, you know, it would certainly, it, it feels like there's a big part of this that if you don't really, really want it, you should never sign up for it. Well, you know, I, I know what you're saying because it's like, look, it's, it's, it's incredibly hard. It's difficult to describe how hard it is to someone who hasn't done it before. Kind of like you can't describe what having kids is to someone who hasn't had kids. Yes. And you're like, having kids is hard. You're like awake all the time and you're worried about them and you're trying not to kill them and you're not even sure how to not kill them. You're just hoping <laughs> they sort of don't die. And, and, and it's, and it's weird. And, 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 and other people are like, yeah, no, I, I get that. And you're like, no, you don't. You, you just get your car keys and go to dinner and we never do that. Mm-hmm. So you don't get it. You know, like you can't describe it. And, and this is the same way. You just can't describe what it's like when you're in the hole. And you're mm-hmm. and everyone's and everyone else goes four three hundred dollars in a couple months. That's great. You're like couple months. I've been like obsessed to the point of like not being able to sleep for a year, and also money and things and yeah. Uh, and like yeah. And you know, also they, you can't to, you can't describe it. To be but, honest, but I don't, my I don't, whole I, life has been leading. Like it's not just like it's not just like I've been thinking about this for four months. I've been right, thinking about longer. some of this stuff since I was a kid. Like right. th- there's a long process. It's, it's like Peldy has a great thing about that too, right? Um, yeah. And, and uh, I think, 
Yeah, and that's so. This is this is the doldrums where you really have to say. So I really have to do. I have to go through this crucible mm-hmm. if this is going to work. And the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now there's a couple of choices you could try to raise money. You know, okay, we already went through all that. Yeah. So you could try other paths, but ultimately, like, yeah, yeah. There's 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 something's going to give, and that could be. Uh, equity to an investor or other kinds of things like you were saying structure is mm-hmm. usually what the finance guys call it is structure yes you either give yeah. up some structure yeah. or some equity or some control like with you already gave up some because you have a co-founder some people have three there you go more more control loss yeah um, you give up that or you give up your life time yeah. like it, it, it takes something to get these things going they don't just go and yes i know we can all find somebody where it just went okay good for you yeah for every one of you there's a thousand of us who have to struggle and not struggle poor and that's very very bad yeah um, but it is hard it is hard for a little bit like that's also true like there's you can you can be against the glorification of struggle yeah but still recognize that that doesn't mean there's never struggle like of course yeah. there is like that's that's ridiculous to say it's not hard that's just in fact that's insulting yeah. To say to for DHH to say it's it's easy is yeah. insulting. And that, yes, it no, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. And by the way, remember he admitted later in that Twitter thread, but not at first. Yeah. Well, actually, everybody there was four people working on a part time, so actually it was like forty sixty hours a week being put into that side project. Oh, I oh, see. Sure. What, I well, see what you're saying. Yeah. Great. So like all it takes is full time. That's what I was saying. <laughs> yes. Now one way to do it is their way, which is to give up control by having four co founders. Yes. Great, but just just say that. Don't pretend like it, it takes ten hours a week. That's wrong. Well, in their case, two co-founders, but two other Whatever. full-time other people. people. Yeah. Oh, where did they get the money for that? Oh, we already had an agency going. Oh, so we had a day job. Yeah. Which then paid for th- doing this, which they could have dividended out, but not by first getting an agency going. Yeah. Okay. Th- this is a totally different story. Yes, exactly. It takes forty hours a week of work. This is the way they did it, which, by the way, is great. Yeah. No problem. Just yeah. say. What we did is we built an agency which then funded product that still took us two years after that of doing that but with one, maybe one and a half people full times worth of work and then we got it to work. Yeah. Right. That's what I've been saying. Yeah. It takes something like 40 hours a week of work for something like two years to get the damn thing off the ground. Yeah. Maybe that's two co-founders at 20 hours a week or something like that. But yes, that's what it takes. Yeah. Okay. We're all say, actually saying the same thing if we're being honest about what it takes to get it going. Yes. Okay. But uh, also struggle porn's bad. So because because that's presented like somehow you're winning or successful by being totally underwater and not and 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 ignoring your family. Mm-hmm. So like struggle porn is bad because it's glorifying a problem. Like the the, the reason we're ha- you're in this situation is because the company's not going yet. Yeah. It's just getting started. It isn't successful yet in that sense. In yeah. the sense that you want, which is that it's paying the bills. Yeah. Just to be clear, what we mean by success, it's your definition, the one where it's paying your bills. That, yeah. That, in that I want some money. <laughs> yes. In that definition, it's no, it's not successful yet because it just started. I think it's on a good trajectory, but yeah. it's not at that point yet. Okay. Um, so the reason you're going to have to struggle and put in all the money or I mean, all the time or whatever mm-hmm. is because it's not working yet. Yeah. It's a bad thing. It's not a good thing that you have to do it. Yeah. The problem with struggle porn is it says this is a good thing. And I'm working so hard and I'm such a hustler. Yeah. And, and the glorifying that. No. It's the, that, in fact, is a symptom of the problem, which is that the business isn't going yet. It's mm-hmm. not yet a real business yeah. in the way that you want. Again, just clarifying in the way that you want. Um, yes. Of course, it's okay if you want money on the side and do it on the side. It's cool. Yeah. That's not what you want. Yes. Therefore, it's not doing what you want. So it's, we shouldn't glor- it, should, it shouldn't be glorified. Of course, you are not. You're saying, this sucks. Exactly. Now that now we're struggling, but we're being honest. Struggle porn is, it's supposed to be like this, and it's awesome, and I'm successful because I'm struggling. It's like, no, you're mm-hmm. struggling because it's not working yet. Yeah. And th- th- then that continues. Let's say you have a team of 10 people, and you've got struggle porn still. Yeah. Why? Why Why are you still working 100-hour work weeks with the team? Again, it's because you're failing as a leader. Yeah. Maybe it's because you're micromanaging everyone. That's why it takes so much time, because you're doing everyone's job. Well, that's a leadership failure if you're doing that to people. Yeah. Well, maybe you're doing that to people because they're not competent enough. Well, that's a leadership failure because you hired them. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe it's they are competent and you're just overbearing and not letting them do their job. Well, that's a leadership failure because you're supposed to hire people that can do the job and then let them do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and encourage and edit and stuff like that, but not do it for them. Or not, you know, in other words, no matter what stage you're at, that's still small. Of course, it's still true when it's big. But even just from that zero employees to take 10 employee range. It's always a failure mode if that's what's going on. Yes. Now, the difference is at 10 people, like, you just shouldn't need to do that anymore. 
So you're really in trouble. Early on, I feel like, yeah, that's just where we're at. Like, it's not good and we should try to get out of it. Yeah. Let's just not glorify it. But on the other hand, let's not say like somehow – like again, how insulting is it to say like somehow you're a failure because you you don't have a business making 20 grand a month after four months. Yeah. That's insulting and not true. Yeah. Yeah, I think what's helpful, especially in the high fidelity that this is right now, is the – because I can hear your story and then I can think of my story. And I can think, you know, um, there are certain things that are just true. Like for most people in North America, if you've been working on something and committing a fair amount of energy to it for three years – $20,000 $20,000 a year in revenue is probably uh, not a good use of your time and you should move on. But mm-hmm. in the meantime, everybody has to make hard decisions. It's not mm-hmm. like it's or most and maybe there's a lucky few that don't. But this idea of trade offs and really looking at those and deciding for you which ones you're willing to make and which ones you're not. That's just the journey. That's the journey for everybody. It's hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I think that's probably good. You've been very kind with your time. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm sure... Uh, I apologize, by the way, for folks watching live. I, I had some hiccups there. I know some of you were able to stay the whole time. I'm going to package this up and uh, publish it on the Product People podcast. Um, yeah, is there... Is there anything else that you're doing these days that you want people to know about on your blog or on WPN? No, because a company is a full-time job and my other choice is family. And so I'm not doing other things. I'm not even really, I'm not a, I used to do more like investing or advising or something like that. And I, in fact, sadly write very infrequently on the blog too, which Mm -hmm. I hope uh, it would be nice if I did more of, I guess. But, um, uh, but I also understand exactly my own advice. <laughs> and so I understand what I'm doing. So no, I'm not really, uh, WP engine is, is absolutely, you know, more than a full-time job. Yeah. So there do it you, is. Do you, just to close, do you still like it? Like, is it still fire you up and is it still hard? Well, it's definitely hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, that's the easiest one to answer. It's definitely still it's hard. hard. It's still hard. Oh, <laughs> Uh, very hard, but just different reasons. Yeah. Um, you're not, we're not worried whether like we, you know, will we have hundreds of people sign up tomorrow as new customers? The answer is yes. Yeah. With yeah. very high degree of certainty. So I'm not, not worried about that. Wow. There's so much else. How do you feed and grow 600 people? Um, you can't do that with a small product release. Yeah. Any idea you have, which might make a couple million dollars a year, isn't worth doing. Yeah. Well, then what are the ideas that can make tens of millions of dollars a year? It's actually like almost impossible to think of those ideas. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we do? Yeah. Do you right back to what do you do? Yeah. Um, strategy at that level, it's global as well. That's complicated. Um, and here, here's, here's a great example of, of something that's hard. That's not hard when it's small, but definitely hard here. Um, so we're big enough where uh, everything that happens to human beings happens pretty frequently. Mm. people have a new baby mm-hmm. there's a uh people get married people mm-hmm. get divorced mm-hmm. um people die mm-hmm. our own employees die we have to deal with that yeah they die in different ways we have to deal with that yeah or very close or you know someone's kid or something you know really really devastating yeah um so the the things that happen though we're still small enough that everybody knows, like either knows that person directly or know, like it's just one step away and really kind of feels it like, Oh wow. Yeah. I remember that guy, you know? Yeah. So therefore there's this constant, actually quite difficult barrage of humanity, yes. but small enough that like everyone is like experiencing that semi directly all the time. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> and like it, it's an unexpected, like, well, what about organizational structure? Like, yeah, that's hard too. But like there's other stuff too. That's like, you don't really think about yeah. necessarily that, that just appears. And, and, and clearly it's not like, Oh, well, here's what you, here's what you do. And like, you've made a tactical error. Like, yeah. no, the, no, that's what it is. Right. Yeah. There's really nothing to do except try to manage that. Uh, well, yeah. So, so no, there's lots of things that are hard. I think in terms of fun, I think, um, 
it comes it, it, it goes like this. And, and what happens is you just have to, as I said before, be really honest about what do I like? What am I good at? What mm-hmm. does the company need? Yeah. Those are the three things. What do I like? What am I good at company? And there's failure modes whenever one of those things, or I guess more than one, are not true. So like if I'm doing something I'm good at and the company needs, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Except if I don't like it, I burn out. Yeah. And I say I. It's anybody. I, obviously, I'm just speaking for myself. But obviously, what I really mean is for anybody in any situation, right? Yes, totally. <laughs> and, and so, so that's not a great mode for very long. Yeah. But if you do something you like but are not good at, it's not really helpful. Yes. <laughs> or you like it and the company needs it, but you're not the best. Yeah. Well, at, at our now, when you're small, perfect because whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're not the best at almost anything. Keep yeah. moving. Right? Yeah. Good enough. So, yeah. Now, at our size, though, it's actually not okay. Because if the company needs it, whatever it is, we also need it to be really good. Or else we're not going to do it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we don't just, like, kind of figure it out. Like, yeah. if it's that important, we need, like, probably a whole team and a leader who knows. It's a whole thing. Yeah. So, like, oh, uh, we'll just kind of wing it. Um, well, we the things that are important enough to really demand action are important enough that we can't just wing it anymore. It's too hard or specialized. Mm-hmm. So therefore I like it and the company needs it is no longer an excuse. That's a failure mode at scale. Yeah. That's not a failure mode early, but at some point it's a failure mode. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's a mode where you're just not getting excellence on something you need. There's a failure mode of you like it and you're good at it, but the company doesn't need you to do it. Yeah. I fall into that sometimes. Mm-hmm. I would love to code this up and yeah. I'm good at it. Yeah. And I get in the zone. Yeah. And also we don't need it. It's not, it's not moving the needle on anything that we need to do. Yeah. So uh, as a founder, it's very easy to get into that found failure mode because usually no one's telling the founder what to do. Yeah. So if you're doing something that you like and you're good at, no one tells you, stop it. We need you to do sales, not code. Like no one usually grabs you by the collar and tells you that. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's a failure mode. That's why it's hard. That's why yeah. you can be introspective about the whole thing. Yeah. So do you, what do you like? What are you passionate? Or what are you, what are you good at? What does the company need? Yeah. Obviously, this is an idealization. You can't be in the center all the time, and it's a goddamn Venn, Venn diagram, and we don't need more of those, do we? Yeah, so yeah. I get all that. Yeah. So I get that, but that nevertheless, that's by the way the structure I use to decide not to be CEO. Like mm-hmm. I use that very thing to decide something as important and big as I'm not the right person for the CEO because yeah. the company needs this and that as a CEO. Many companies do once you get to a certain size. I mean, we were around 60, 70 people at that point. Yeah. And what am I good at? Not that not leading huge groups of people and managing and hiring an executive team and with the caliber that we need to open global offices and blah, 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 blah. Number one, that's not my expertise. And number two, that sounds like hell yeah. to, me, to yeah. me. And what the company deserves is someone where not only is it her expertise and it is a her in our case, by the way, I'm not just doing that to do whatever it's, yeah. it is a her. <laughs> so yeah. not only is it her expertise, she, it is her, it is her favorite job. Yeah. She loves it. That's what's everyone deserves. It's what the company deserves too, by the way. And I deserve it as a founder. I deserve to not get burnt out on doing something that I'm not good at the communities. I deserve it. We yeah. all deserve it. <laughs> right? yeah. This is a good thing. Yeah. So I think, I think keeping that in mind is the right mentality, whether you're at scale and in leadership, whether you're just got a job and just trying to figure out what's my career path. Yeah. Or if you're a founder navigating exactly what you're doing and you can, and, and you're asking these questions about if I'm not going to get burnt out, What's going to happen here? Yeah. Um, th- that's a, that is a good framework. I don't, I've been using that framework for a while and I've written about it and I've talked about it. I'm pretty sure like you can find frameworks that are almost the same all over the place. Like it's not like this is super unique. It's just my particular way of doing that particular thing. Yeah. Um, that, that works for me anyway. And, uh, so that's what I use to decide. So, so when you ask like, are, do, you, do you like what you're doing? Yeah. Um, Often, yes, life doesn't let you do that all the time. Um, but I do. Th- I try to be introspective in that with that exact uh, framework, with that way yeah. to ask, how can I do what I like the most, the most, <laughs> yeah. but with those other constraints? Because th- then I'm healthiest, and also the business is healthiest, and everyone in the business should be trying to do that. And I tell people that, and I, we use that to help people figure out their careers and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's been it's this has been very um helpful for me, I think. Good. Just in terms of See, uh, Dr. Laura worked. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> I didn't tell uh, you you were shit enough. You're shit. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> gotta you gotta you gotta give me a hard time. Yeah, I need uh, to give you a hard time. I mean, I think that the, yes, that the part that's hard is just that it's hard. 
And the part that's hard is that I'm not Jason Cohen and I'm in a no. That's not it, because I was hard. It's hard for me too. Like yes. it's just hard. Yes, totally, exactly. I that part, that perspective has been helpful. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time, Jason. Thank you. This is fun. Thanks again, folks, for showing up for pushing play on this in your podcast player. I hope that discussion was helpful for you. Uh, If you'd like to see the video version of that, it's on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Justin Jackson. If you want to read the blog post that kind of kicked this whole thing off, it's at justinjackson.ca slash side project. And yeah, you can always reach out to me on Twitter. I'm the letter M, the letter I, Justin. Again, Megamaker is going to be opening up again soon. Go to megamaker.co. And uh, if I don't talk to you before the holidays, have a great holiday, and I will see you in the new year, 2019. Podcast hosting is provided by Transistor.fm. They host our MP3 files, generate our RSS feed, provide us with analytics, and help us distribute the show to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. If you want to start your own podcast or you want to switch to Transistor, go to Transistor.fm Justin and get 15% off your first year.